you know, just try to we'll do the best we can. Fly. We haven't been live yet. Huh? Thanks. I know. Uh, welcome tonight to our Monday night webinar with Driverpreneur, sponsored by Explore Grand Rapids and also Ride Local, where we drive people happy. Tonight, we're going to talk about how to make over $40 an hour the Uber and Lyft. But before we get into that subject, I'd like to welcome Dawn here uh, on our webinar. Hi. And she uh, represents Explore Grand Rapids. She's responsible for a lot of the activity packages uh, that uh, they end up selling over with Explore Grand Rapids. She does a lot of the planning and the facilitating and so on. So if you need to talk to her or you can always call customer or dial into customer service at explorecitygr.com and you can just address it to her and she'd be happy to get back with you with any information. A lot of it's good for restaurants or any type of venue in the Grand Rapids area. I'd like to give a shout out to Grand Rapids Rideshare Adventures and uh, just uh, have you look them up either on YouTube uh, or you can uh, look them up on Facebook. I believe it's our GR Rideshare Adventures on Facebook. Go ahead and look up and look at some of their podcasts. They have a lot of good information, not only for uh, tips, or but they keep you abreast on a lot of the news that is taking place in the industry. Uh, let's get back into what we're going to talk about tonight. We do have from last week, I did talk about uh, three ways to jumpstart your business. And uh, I'm going to talk about that tonight. But first, I want to get into this topic because this is a big issue. Uh, and then later into the webinar, I'll go ahead and address that. So stay tuned because it's going to be a very relevant for not only if you're going to get into being a driverpreneur with Ride Local, but it's very relevant if you're just out there driving, maybe you're in another state and you're driving for uh, Uber or Lyft or you're doing some other things out there. But anyhow, this is going to be really good information for you for you to spearhead your business no matter where you're at in the United States. But anyhow, what are your fair averages per hour as a driver? I don't care who you're driving for, what platform. The one thing that you should all concern yourself is the fair averages. What am I making per hour? And the reason why that's so important because if you do not calculate your cost in your uh, in your revenue to determine what type of profitability you have. And there's indirect and direct costs are related to it. If you do not do that, then you really don't know how profitable. It's possible for you to go on for a week, a month, two months, and three months and lose money and not really realize it. And when you do is when you can't pay the bills. So really that's very important because a lot of things that a lot of drivers don't even concern and Don, we see that out there because you complain about it. One of the things is filling up on gas. So the price of gas reflects my cost, right? As a business owner, as a driver, I should think about keeping my cost low, right? And one of that would be on the gas area. Now, there's many ways we can show you how to save money on gas, but that's one of the areas you have to concentrate. That is probably one of the, I would say, the major direct costs that you have. Right. The other one would be the cleaning of the vehicle. I mean, I know since I've been driving that I clean my vehicle a lot more often than I did when I didn't drive. Right. Is exactly. that true? And now yep. that it's more dirtier because yeah, I have exactly. people in there. It's not their cars. And it just through the nature of the business, right. they're going to get more dirtier than normal. Another time thing is wasted time waiting uh, for riders. How many times do we wait around for the rider to get there? They're not out there when we come and arrive. Either we're waiting at the initial pickup, mm -hmm. right? Or there's other times I have had how many riders always, always, always tell you, hey, can you just stop here? Hey, can you stop in here? Let me pick up a pack of smokes. Or, yeah. hey, yeah. can you do this? So that's wait time. If we ever do any time of wait time, because sometimes drivers... Uh, if, a, if, a, if a customer asks you, sometimes I think the drivers feel like intimidated, almost like they don't want to say no. Right. So in some right. cases you don't, 
you know, and then that's where you get that wasted time to waiting on your rider. And that's where the cost associated to it. The other is maintenance. And then off, obviously you have your taxes and licenses and insurance fees, right. you know, so yep. there is a, and your payment. I mean, not to mention if you're making a payment on your vehicle, there's another cost. Now, is there anything else you want to hit on this area? Because I know you're out there as well. And I know uh, some of the things I would like to maybe talk some of the other things that no one ever thinks about is maybe the water or maybe uh, gum or maybe maybe a, some chips a handout or something, or something. Right, right. right? Any type of incidentals that you might just give to try to uh, be a good business owner of your driving, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna try to satisfy your customers because you know the more things you can do for them like that and offer things, the bigger your tip should be. Right. right. So that's exactly. what you try to do. Let's go ahead and move on to our next slide. And are you working for a paycheck or are you working for your future? That's, that's, that's the number one thing you have to look at. Uh, many people work for a paycheck and in, uh, in some cases they don't even have enough cash at the end of the week. Right. You know, or That's are you trouble. working, right. Or are you working for the future? Now, a wise man told me once when I was younger and uh, before I started my first business, he said to me, he goes, if you work eight hours a day, Angelo, he goes, you're working for a job. If you work over that, you start working for your future. Right. And when I got, got uh, luckily for me, I grasped that. And I still remember it to this day mm -hmm. because I have used that throughout my mm -hmm. career. So anyhow, does your, the uncertainty cause stress and anxiety? A lot of times, uh, I don't know, for me, I don't know, maybe you can interact a little bit with Don with it. But for me, probably the greatest anxiety and stress I could possibly feel is when I can't pay a bill. Or I can't feed my child, or I, you know, I mean, or give them the food that really they should deserve, you know. So there's, I mean, you're obviously going to have food because there's pantries and everything to feed right, your right, kids, right. but there's still that level where maybe you can only afford this, but you'd like to bring it up to this level for your family. Right. So I mean, interact a little bit on that if you like to. Just step in there. Okay. Um, the uncertain certainty of having a job is because they stop you from making the money that you need and or want right they tell you how much money you can make right um with ride local you can make as much as you work it doesn't matter right 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 I mean, right that's exactly and that's my biggest thing is when you got the stress and anxiety when you're dealing Not being with able to pay bills or if you can't pay bills or if you're tinging on chasing for that ride because i mean i know when i go out a lot of times i'm chasing for that next ride you know sometimes i'll, I'll say to myself hey i'll quit at this this time mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it gets to that time and then I chase that next ride and before I know it I'm taking two three four more rides and not what I overly plan for right. Right. now if I'm my profitability was higher that would be a whole new ball to but it's is it's a struggle to be profitable that's my my biggest point here uh I always believe and I told you a long time ago it's not bad if I work my tail off all week that's okay as long as I may bank Right. But it's when I work my tail off all week and, and I barely make bank, I barely make it to make bills. Right. Exactly. That's when the problem lies. Yeah. So, I mean, do, do you worry about your future? That's a whole thing. I mean, are you looking at, uh, am I going to be better next year? Am I going to be better next month? Am I going to be better the year after that? So that's the whole key of it is to be better from this day forward. So right. if tomorrow I should be better than today and tomorrow I should be, you know, right the day after that should be better than the day before and so on. If not, then I'm just spinning, spinning my wheels. Right, right, right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I'm never accomplishing anything because of that. So when is enough enough? I mean, when do you say, oh, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I, I need to change things. I just can't do this no more. I can't let my family suffer anymore the way they have. I can't keep on living with the stress and anxiety and the uncertainty. Right. Well, hopefully enough is enough is before you get into a financial bind where you're losing your home or your car or That's whatever. Right. That's right. Um, hopefully you've changed before that. You know, if you notice that, you know, okay, this month we're a little bit short. Well, we'll maybe we'll make it up next week, next month. Don't do right. that. Right. Make it consistent. And by that, because we, we give so much more to our drivers, the 100% shares and so much more. Um, 
you're gonna they're gonna want i think they're gonna want to work i think, you're right. I think they're gonna want to because it'll be more fun right because they're actually making a dollar right. they're getting ahead as they're right. doing it they feel like they're getting ahead there, there's a light at the end of the tunnel there's some hope maybe and at what time do you stop hoping that uber or lyft will change right they're I mean, not I'm, going to right because they're I mean, not going to if they were they would they have done, done it right ago. with mm -hmm. some of the uh, conflicts they've had with ab5 in california right, with right. i mean some of the conflicts in london all that stuff would have been the first little small conflict if they were going to change the first conflict would have re resulted in them to change mm -hmm. not to be able to force to change but to change because it was a main thing to do right. that's the thing if you're working on a local business and <sighs> I guess, you know, let's say, let's say you got caught them stealing from overtime in your paycheck. You get your paycheck every week, every two weeks. But as you're looking at it, it looks a little fishy, but you don't say anything. All of a sudden it goes on a little bit. Oh boy, now you notice it. You start checking balances and now you bring it up to HR, right? right. So you take it into HR, you tell them about it. They say, oh, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. You're fine next week, right? Everything's cool. They paid the rent, the mistake was made, but they, they knew they the mistake it. and they rectified it right. Just like if a bank charges you more fees, service fees, and then uh, you find out about it. Right. So the, the main thing is if you find out about a problem and then you bring it up to the company or whatever you're doing business with, and then all of a sudden, boom, they take care of the issue, then you know it's an isolated is, is, incident. You know, right, it's right. isolated, it's a mistake. You know what I mean? Because we're dealing with people and we're fallible and so on. Then you can deal with that. The problem with dealing with it is when you find, I had this happen with a bank and I won't name banks, but here in Grand Rapids. But when you find them, that you find out it was neglect or it was intentional. That's when you start thinking, I can't trust them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go every day and have to check on them to make sure. It's almost like uh, if, it, if it quacks like a duck, odds are it's, it's a duck. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's really true. Mm -hmm. Now, what does Uber and Lyft care about? What are the things? I mean, it's not me saying this. Of course, we wrote this down, right. but a lot of this is from a survey we did and our opinions, right? Right, right? We put it in a pool and found out what they care about. What do they care about? Mostly, I believe uh, when somebody says they care about something, find out what their actions are about to determine where they care. Where their heart lies is generally what they care about, right? right? So if we start out, first thing that they care about is rider's money. Everybody knows that. It's all about getting that rider's money, right? Mm -hmm. So they do everything to spur interest, to try to get market share, right? To stimulate it, right. to take it away from each other and battle between Uber and Lyft. Now you got lawsuits, right? Lawsuits continue to happen. Why? Because they, they don't take care of the people, They right? don't care, right. Exactly. That's exactly right. Now, then, because they don't take care of the problem. Then the it, government goes right. into it, and then they start right. making rules and regulations and licenses and fines and all kinds That's of things. That's exactly stuff. right. And, the, and then it starts hitting down on the profitability yeah. of the company. They do care about that. Now, if you look at right now, after all these other things, you figure the three we have on the screen, the top three, the writer's money, lawsuits, the regulations, right? That would be now, the next one, you go into the profitability, right? Mm -hmm. Because really, that's what they're at. Now, they're at that stage of business right now because of the way they decided to build it and scale it, right? Mm -hmm. Being inexperienced in operations on it, I get the scaling part of it, but it's uh, there's another whole issue with that. I don't think it's a, a wise business decision, obviously, but I'm not them. Right. But right now, they're at the point of profitability that they got to increase their prices in 2020 because they yeah. have to. Right. Make they're some losing profit. a lot of stockholders. That's right. That's a right. lot of it stockholders. affects the stockholders. So that's all. Who, what is the common denominator now? It has nothing to do with who? The driver. That's exactly right. It has nothing to do with the driver. No human, nothing really. It's all about money. Uh, and that's really the sad thing about it. Uh, not only that, if you look at it, 50% uh, of the fares, and let's just go on an average, 50% of the fares in Grand Rapids, Michigan from rideshare, whether it comes from Lyft or Uber or whatever, that 50% doesn't stay in our city, doesn't stay in our state, goes back to California. Mm -hmm. That's the sad thing. So in reality, I always thought I should like to do it like a blog and say uh, Grand Rapids is supporting California. Right. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I mean, that's and that's it. really what, what they're doing. Yep, it is. 
Now, wh what would make a good rideshare company? Now, obviously, we, we're partial over here, but obviously, we've developed it and everything was put together, you and I, based on what? The market and what was not there. So as a businessman, one of the biggest things that you have to do when you start any business, and that's everything that we've ever started, is to define your niche, right? You right. have to decide what kind of business I'm in, and you have right. to get down to the nitty gritty to the point, almost defining it down to a class of people. Mm -hmm. And if you can exactly. do that, then you can define the niche, right? Because right. that's what really and what it you're might trying take to do. A, a few months or maybe even a year for you to right. find that niche, and that's okay. That's right. That's, that's right. Okay, but you'll eventually get it, and then you'll start seeing more and more. Right. It's almost like if I went out there and I did a mass advertising and I am a mass advertising, let's say with the state of Michigan, mm -hmm. opposed to maybe uh, a, a zip code, mm -hmm. I would get better penetration through the zip code than I would in the mass of Michigan. It right. just makes sense. Right. Right, right. right. So anyhow, the next thing we'll move on is to determine your market strategy and that's to determine exactly what are you going to do? Right. You know what I mean? And especially going into the ride share business, it's not an easy business to break into. And not only that, but we have to have some type of market strategy in order to do that. Otherwise, we're going to fail itself. So we always believe, but the market strategy is rideshare has never done one thing. It's never tied local businesses, all three of them together, mm -hmm. has never really done that. Right. Although they drive and transport riders, residents in our town every day to local businesses, whether it be a restaurant, the movie theater, whether it be a shopping mall, whether it be a convenience store, get, right, whatever. Yeah. Right, exactly. So in reality, that's what's happening anyhow. So if it's happening, why can't we open it up and tie them everybody into it where it's a joint effort? So it's a community event. We take the riders, the drivers, and everybody to do it at the same time. And that's really what we've done. We've had to, de to determine a competitive advantage. One way we've done that is uh, through a lot of the survey I've done with regular riders in Grand Rapids is our competitive advantage is that the first ride is always free. Well, that's one thing we've done right. with Ride Local, mainly to get people just to try it. You know, right. if you can try something and it is, does, you do experience something that's different, then you'll continue, continue that process. Right. And that's what we're hoping. The second of all is our prices and our fares are the lowest you'll get. And the reason being because we're not large corporation, we're right. We're local. But even though our prices are lower than our competitors, right, in the market, mm -hmm. even though they're lower, our drivers are making, still making a heck of a lot more than they were with the way they're driving with Uber and Lyft. Uh, because we pay the 100% of fares and tips. There's no setup fees whatsoever. So really, it's re we've made it really easy for somebody to get into it because we know really it's about building your business one rider at a time. Right. So if we can do that and we can do it collectively as a group, we can also change things and we can actually probably touch a lot of people's lives in our community. You bet. You bet. Now, uh, we're, we developed a driver and a rider base, and that way we can tie the driver into the rider base if the driver can uh, build their own base as a regular business would. So if you're a driverpreneur, you're a business owner of that platform. So there's a couple things you're going to be interested in. One thing is to increase your customer base, right? And how do you do that? By growing your rider base. As you grow your rider base, your customer base grows. Now, also, there's a, as a driverpreneur, because you're an entrepreneur, you're thinking about your customer, there's also different levels of customers. So as a driver, you would be thinking in terms of, okay, I have, as time goes on, as you drive, as you uh, build your base, you're going to look at your base, you're going to say, okay, this is my base, but what is my most profitable part of my base? So we'll start getting down where we'll start uh, defining exactly what that market and that market base that you have established is. Right. And to maximize the profitability of it. The other thing is to understand that every time you have that platform with a driver, right? Mm -hmm. I have, you get the fares and you'll get the fares with anybody. You'll get more fares with Ride Local, right. but there's more to driving than getting fares. And that's why we built the platform to show people how to do that. 
most people do not know how to think differently than uh, being an employee. And, and the reason being is because we're, we have jobs. That's how we're taught to think. And so we're, we think in those terms rather than think some, thinking in terms of how can I increase my profitability? Like they, if, today, if I drive today, my profitability tomorrow, if I had the same amount of riders, should be better. Right. Each day it's exactly. about getting to the next level. And that's right. why we try to define your niche and so on, because really it's about maximize profitability and minimizing your cost. Right. The other thing is to be supported by local businesses. I think that is huge. very well, it's a huge on our side, right? As far as a driver and the rider to take riders to those destinations, but it's really huge on the local business as well. Right. Because if you think about it. Not many people drive leads into local businesses. They drive leads as far as maybe deliveries because you got your Uber Eats, you got stuff like that. So they drive that type of business. But really, a lot of your venues like your uh, your tw uh, uh, the intersection or 20 Monroe right. venues like that, they're looking to fill more seats. They're looking to add to that base. There's not a lot of platforms you can literally have somebody that's going to drive people there. And literally, we're not, we are right. both ways, yep. drive the leads, but drive the, the customer there as well. Yep. Right. So, and then becoming a community asset is to be part of something bigger than you, right? Bigger than me and bigger than anybody else. Really, it's about other people and reaching out uh, to touch those less fortunate in our city. But in the same token, as we do that, we build our business. You know, we build a, a, a stable, independent uh, financial income that can uh, not only better our family's lives, but our lives. Right. But how about the people we touch too? Because as I always know, as I become a better entrepreneur, right? In this case, a driverpreneur, I, I don't know, good things that happen to me. I just want to tell other people about. Well. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like I want to help others with what I've learned. Right. And I believe that will way. happen with a driver base when we collectively bring drivers together. Could you imagine, could you imagine the ideas and the thoughts that they can come up when they're out in the grind, they're on their boots, boots on the ground. So they know better than all what can turn on a rider, right. what, what does it need to need a driver need? You know, I, mean, I think they know the business better than anybody. So collectively let them make a decision. Right. Because even on the pricing structure, I'll give you an example of what well, we can look at Uber prices, we can look at Lyft prices, but bottom line, right, it's a collectively us ride drivers to determine what a pricing we want right. and what kind of a right. marketing strategy do we want to go forward. And just like I had told you as well, that I know this is back in the 80s, remember we had the round tables, oh, if yeah. you will? Sure. Well, that's what I'm hoping is going to happen here. And it's not a matter of coming into one business. It's a matter of everybody get online. Right. We can do it on a webinar. That's right. So we want to hear your your ideas. We want to hear your thoughts. You know, uh, we don't take lightly to anything. We do read them when we do uh, taking everything into consideration. Right. Right. We're yeah. We're looking to support drivers, but but and that's really what it's about. Yep. And in, in token support what the residents in the community. Right. Uh, we are tired of the injustice. We do want people to unite. I mean, that, that's exactly what we're all about, about right. uniting. The change has to start with us, right? With you. Mm -hmm. You'll never change your life until you change something you do every day, right? And mm -hmm. that's John Maxwell. And that's the truth. If I don't right. change, if I, if I keep on doing what I did prior, prior to today, I'm going to get the Nothing same kind of thing out of it. Out right? of it. Yep. So all I ask is... Uh, with someone who's not interested. And I do understand that you go out and you drive and then you're trying to make that money in order to pay your bills. I get all that part of it. So you press for that. So you think to yourself, man, I'm already putting in hours. How can I do any more than that? Right. You know what I mean? But there's, see, there's ways you can do it to jumpstart it. And there's ways where you can spring load yourself off the thing that you're doing right now. Uh, and so, and there's other ways that we do it through SEO. And I mean, there's a number of different ways. And that's really what the platform is to show people how to get to that level. Right. Don't you agree? I, I mean, do. really. I do. Yeah. And then three ways, we're going to get to three ways to jumpstart your business. Uh, and the reason being is because this, I, this is proven really effective for me. Uh, 
I've learned a long time ago, and before I can set something up or give suggestions to people, I have to go out there and try it myself. Right. Because I might have to tweak it and then, you know I mean, and get right, the right, system right, down right, a little right. bit different. Right. And then when I'm done, I can show somebody and then they don't have to go through the problem I went through. Right. And it makes right. sense. Yeah. So that's what I did out there. And this is these three things here is what I have done to build my driver right. base. And what another thing I have done that too. I have invited my friends. I've invited my family. You know, I've handed out the cards. But another thing that I have done and it works so well for me is I got on Facebook groups. Right. Like in Grand Rapids, there's the West Siders, and you know, there's all different right, kinds that of groups that's that helps. Social, sure. I did it to a smaller town, which is still considered a city, and they're welcoming us to come in to the city hall, take in one of their chambers, and right. have a, a show, a performance on you know what like we're a trying to do. Presentation. Presentation. Right? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. to show them what we're doing. Yep. So anyhow, if you buy it, all, and that's what I'm saying, if you can just if you can just invite your family and friends, anyone that is three feet from you, and there's uh, two ways you can do it, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have the platform. Uh, you can literally download the app, right? You have the invite code. So if you don't, don't want to take the ride, you can save it or whatever you want right, to do right. it. And you can download the app and then use the invite code, right, on that app, which is your app now. Mm -hmm. use the invite code and then you can start inviting people and the reason why i say that is because uh, we came up with a system where we pay five dollars for all writers that are invited you know and that's based from writer to writer and that's what we've done uh and if you're three feet from any anybody you, you can give them a card and some people will like the idea of getting 100 percent of the fares for driving uh and other people will be a writer right. or some people will be an influencer and just kind of invite people. So they may never, never use it, but they have it. The whole mo most important thing is get it downloaded. Once you get it downloaded, you choose how you want. You want to take the free ride? You can, if you don't, right. you can wait for a, you know, a rainy right. day or something. Right. But, and then the second thing is to visit some of the venues and then hand out QR codes to like patrons and stuff and local businesses. And I've done a little bit of that. Uh, what I tried to do though, I, I, I watch myself because when I hand out those cards, I make sure when I hand them out to like the patrons, right? Like to a local mm -hmm. restaurant yep. or uh, a, a venue. What I'm, the one I'm thinking about was B-dubs. Anyhow, I hand them out in there, but you got to watch how many you do at one time because you do get kind of flooded. So anyhow, uh, I didn't want to take too many free rides at night. Makes sense. Right. So I had to kind of control how many on that particular venue that I hand hand handed out. Right. So if I was going to hand out to Stella's, let's say, or Billy's or something like that in that crowd, get somebody to get it into the crowd, you know, through somebody who I know or whatever, then I'm going to probably limit it to how many I do on a given night right. because I don't want to be flooded myself right and really because it's my business i'm trying to spur interest for me so really it's about when that does come through i'm going to be the one that's going to be close to there near closing time so when that does happen all right i'm you going to be, be able to satisfy the people i'm right, right. The writers yep. i've yep. influenced now use your current driving platform and i normally like do that too i have a platform that i drive for other other company companies. And mm -hmm. when I do it at the, when I leave, I just uh, tell them, Hey, here's a card for you. you. You get a free ride with it, check them out. They're locally. And then uh, they also offer lowest fares. And then I just give them a card and that's it. Right. Uh, some do, some don't next. I mean, and that's really pretty much what it is. Right, right, so right. it's, you know, it's a numbers game, just like with anything, but as you build it, you build relationships. And mm -hmm. I notice that uh, my, I know one thing, the quality of the rider I get with Ride Local is better than I get with any other platform. And I don't know why that is, but the ones I seem to get with Ride Local use me more often. I don't, I don't know how, how that works, but it does work. And then, you know, and some of them will even get to a ride to work where they'll be using me five days a week. Right. Uh, I have, and I, I'm starting to get some from the airport. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting people that travel frequently, business people, right. which is kind of cool to get that because there are generally longer trips and so on. Right. But anyhow, I'll get talking about this all day. We'll get into how to quick start your business. 
A lot of it is uh, lay out your goals. Now, this can be applied whether you're in California, in New Zealand, or UK. But anyhow, lay out your goals. Now, you're planning on jumping right into full-time or wanting to start out slow. If you're jumping in full-time, make sure you can supplement your income through other forms like job and stuff like that. And I did that. You've done that. Well, you know, that way you can maintain your living expenses. It's not a big shock for your uh, family. It's possible to start out as small. Like in our situation, you're going to do Ride Local or, yeah, or any platform for that matter. Let's say I had a job and I was going to start out with Uber, right, in California or right. something like that. I would start out gradually and then build my custom, build up, right, at that mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. And then maybe use that platform as a, a, as an entrepreneurial platform like Driverpreneur, in, you know, in another area. You can do right. that as well. Right. But anyhow, the sec second thing is to start some creative advertising because that's the most important. You have to get your name out there. You got to get out there. You need to get the word out there accepting rides. You know, and if you're uh, one of our new uh, driverpreneurs with Ride Local, you have to let them know that you're, hey, I'm here. Right. I'm accepting rides. Exactly. And it's uh, imperative that you should also develop a presence online. Right. So when we teach you that, we teach you all that stuff. We're talking about our website. Uh, we're talking about social media. Right. And mm -hmm. we're also talking how to do different things as far as if you want to do start blogging. Some guys like to write. Some guys like the video right. so right. you can video. There's a lot of things we can do. We can really make this blow up and uh, make, you know, give you a stage. If you want to stay, if you're more quiet, maybe behind the scenes kind of guy, that's cool, too, because we have a program for that as well. Uh, anyhow, next thing is to make a plan for you every day. I mean, to make sure that running your own business requires you to wear different hats, you know that, mm -hmm. but also to have a plan and no one is forcing you to get up and build your business. They you have not. to do that yourself. Right, exactly. You have to be so self-discipline has got to be there. A lot of times I find if I make the plan the night before, and I generally go by threes. I believe good, better, and best, or I believe in one, two, three, mm -hmm. best, right? The, 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 the best thing I should need to do and then and then go right. down to the two less. And always the first right, one is, all, yeah, first is always sales or getting another <laughs> customer, right? Right. Yeah, if they can do that every day and you can knock out those three every day and just change it every day, that's how you start progressing. But focus on the customer is really no way to grow business than word, word of mouth. It'll, Spout off by the rooftops or the mountaintops to let people know who you are, what you're doing. And one of the best ways is this, to keep your writer in the loop. So if you have a writer, that you explain things to them as far as telling them what's going on. Hey, I'm starting a new thing or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. right. And that's really what it's about. Now, I, I believe, I don't care if you're driving for Uber, I don't care if you're driving for Lyft. I do believe if you do not give every writer or customer that wow experience, then uh, you know better than anything else. Because right. if, if a customer doesn't know the difference when they take a ride with you or take a ride with somebody else, they don't know the difference by the ride. There's not a wow right. factor right. to right. it. There's that, nothing. There's right. no and that difference. could be just opening up the door for somebody or that could be offering them a piece of gum or water or whatever. There's wild, different wow factors for everybody. Mm -hmm. But if uh, I tell you right now, if other drivers are giving water, don't you just be giving water. You've got to figure out what a wow it is for your customers, seriously. A wow that's almost exclusive, that you developed a wow for your customer that's exclusive could go so far. Right. Anyhow, uh, right now, we're going to close right now. We kind of went into everything. Join us as we change the ride share with one city at a time. Right now, we're in Michigan. We're just launching Grand Rapids. We do have plans to spreading out into the east side of the, of the state and the Detroit area. We have uh, a lot of drivers have been indicating interest. Uh, it's, uh, it's, and so we're, we've been thinking, uh, we at first originally thought January, but I think a better uh, timeline in order to get the boots on the ground and get things really rolling out at that time would be more in, into March. Uh, but anyhow, no sign up fees, get 100% of fares and tips. Use of invite code when you sign up. Uh, a couple of people uh, last week didn't, and then I didn't know where they came from until I talked to them, which is fine too. It's just uh, we're trying to streamline it because everything goes into a database, and it's RLW1219. That's for our webinars that we have every Monday night at six o'clock. 
Uh, on the left here, we, we're making a campaign, New Year's Eve, get home safely, free ride is always free. And obviously we do that anyhow, but we use it for programs as well. I mean, because New Year's Eve is out there, if it gets somebody home safe because they decided to take advantage of the free ride, that's exactly what we want. We don't want anybody hurt out in the Grand Rapids on New Year's Eve. We want everybody to feel safe. So I'm gonna tell you, if you're out there, you know anybody's out there, at least tell them this. If you need a ride and you're in dire need, right? Something happened, whatever happened, you just are in a situation where you need to get home. I want you to call our, call our number at 616-204-0496. And I swear I will get a driver out to you. You don't worry about the money because let me take care of that. But I will get a driver out to you as soon as possible. We will be there for you. But anyhow, I'd like to say, Thank you for joining in tonight, and I appreciate the time that we've had to together. Don, why don't you go ahead and say sign off with the folks and tell okay. them. Okay, I appreciate you guys joining us tonight, and just remember, Ride Local are the people who drive people happy. Have a great night. All right, have a good night. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.